That stinks. Well, that's what I mean. I think you brought it with you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to RC Plane Lab. I'm Ron. I'm Tom. Today, we're going to be talking about channels on your transmitter. How many do you really need? How many do you really need? And the yeah. number might surprise you. It might. But before we get to that, we have a few things. Once again, it seems like every time we do this, we have some housekeeping to get to. It's okay. First off, we uh, chose a winner for we did. our uh, transmitter giveaway. Yep. So that is finished. We are yep. waiting to hear back from him. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Hopefully he's uh, listening and or watching. Yeah. That was kind of fun to do, though. That was, uh, it was fun. I hadn't done it before. Nope. We probably will do it again. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. With, with something else. But something I else. I don't yeah. know why yet. But that uh, was a good little radio. Um, I mean, it still is a good little radio. <laughs> it's just uh, worked, not ours anymore. It worked great. Yeah. So uh, hopefully uh, the winner will get uh, a lot of use out of it. And hopefully it will perform as well for him as it did for, for us. There you go. Yep. New survey out. Don't yeah. forget, uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you would take it. We've had a lot of people take it so far, and we thank mm -hmm. you for that. Yep. Um, yeah. As Tom likes to say, help us help you. It's, That's right. It's very handy. It is handy. Having something to uh, kind of go off of and kind of shape the future of the show, I guess, if you if you want to say. Well, I mean, really, really, that's exactly what it does, because most of the show ideas or the shows that we've done have come from those surveys. So um, if you got a an idea or a topic you want to hear us talk about, put it on that survey and send it to us. Yeah. Or if you have questions or anything like that, reach out. Also. Uh, yep. We had a computer die this week, <laughs> so we're, we're back to our back to the old paper yeah. notes. Back to notes. Um, so if you see us look down a lot, if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> that's going to be why. Yeah. Um, just to make sure we don't, <laughs> just to make sure we don't Actually, miss anything. that's a really good view right there. Don't show off our notes. <laughs> just leave, leave it alone. <laughs> I was blacking out here. Oh, that nice. <laughs> wow. Um, and don't forget, so this is our last show before we kind of go on mini vacation, spring, I guess, if you want to say. Spring break. Spring break, break yep. fall break, whatever. whatever. Yep. Nothing new is going to be coming out in May. Mm -hmm. um, that's just to give us some time to get caught up on stuff, to maybe build some airplanes, to maybe fly yeah. some airplanes. Fly, yeah. Uh, it's been a while since we've yeah. had time to do it. Shoot some videos of us flying and maybe videos from the airplanes flying. I mean, we don't fly, the airplanes fly, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how <laughs> things go. Uh, but yeah, that's the plan, so hopefully yep. we have some time to do that. Um, so, as a reminder, no episode next week. This mm -hmm. It's going to be weird. Like, I actually don't know if I'm going to like this or not. Like, I'm so used to doing well, weekly stuff that... I mean, pretty much solid every week for a year. Yeah, over, a year and a couple months. Uh, over a year, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, a little break. I think we've earned it. But we it have, is, but it it's going to be weird. It is going to feel weird not to, I mean, not I've, getting together at least once a week to, to do this. But I've we'll got, be getting together in other <laughs> for, for doing other yeah. things, flying videos and maybe some how-tos and stuff. I've gotten so used to this, sitting down though and doing this <laughs> weekly, so that's okay. Yep. Um, so anyway, no episode next week. May 14th, we're going to run a best of episode for mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be no YouTube episode released. Um, let's see, May 21st is going to be our off week mm -hmm. because, you know, we're going to every other week every now other too. Week. May 28th will be another best of episode. Uh, June 4th is going to be an off week. And then June 11th is going to be our next new episode. Yep. Um, so, like I said, bear Mark with your calendars. Us. Yeah. Set a reminder on your phone. Um, but yeah, June 11th will be our next uh, episode with new material in it. And yeah. then it'll be bi weekly uh, until late fall, early winter, whenever the flying season is over. <laughs> whenever there's less to do outside here. Yeah. Because that's really yeah. what kind of keeps us. Busy now too, yeah. and unfortunately, I wish I wish I could say that the reason we're taking a break is just so we could focus on flying and stuff. But let's be real, we have grass cutting to do and yard work, and uh, I have to work on my car, and it's lots of stuff that Life unfortunately is way. not related to the podcast. But we're still going to try to put some stuff out. Like Ron said, he's going to do a couple of uh, best of episodes, and basically that'll be some of uh, like a re airing. Of uh, yeah. a couple of our more popular episodes. And yeah, do we have best ofs? I mean, we have okay ofs. <laughs> <laughs> we have good enoughs. So we're going to pick the goodest enoughest of all. Oh, that's of what them. we. Yeah. How is it that you say? That's what we. That's what we uh, strive for. Good we enough. We strive for okay. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, let's see what else. Uh, while we're off, you can still contact us, though. Don't forget. Absolutely. Uh, yep. We'll still be checking emails and looking over the website and the forums and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, email me, Ron at. Email me, <laughs> wrong email address. Email me, Ron at rcplanelab.com or Tom at rcplanelab.com for this guy over here. Me. Um, text us, area code 818 351 9846. Text, leave us voicemail, uh, picture messages, whatever. Um, what else we got? Let's see. Uh, if you want to contact us via Facebook, I uh, I keep tabs on our Facebook page. So uh, if you got something you want to ask us or show us, uh, Facebook is a good platform to do that, and I keep tabs on that. And uh, so that's another way you can you can get a hold of us. We're not gonna we're not gonna like leave everyone high and dry. We're still gonna stay connected. Uh, it's just we're taking you know we're just not gonna produce anything new until you know until June eleventh. Well, yeah. Let's not beat a dead horse. I think yeah. we, we've got that across now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, last, I mean, basically, I'm just saying you can still contact us. We're still going to be active. Just Yeah. Yeah. Don't be shy. I mean. Yeah, like exactly. we're going to be for a while. Um, yeah. Lastly, we've had quite a few people that have uh, bought shirts and onesies and sweatshirts Swag. and all that kind of stuff off our website. Mm-hmm. First off, thank you. Secondly, yeah. thank we want to see much. pictures of you. Yeah, uh, We won't post them anywhere, so don't think you're going to be going up on our website or anything like that. It'll just be for us. Yeah. But send us, you know... Pictures hey, of you wearing our stuff. If you're on Facebook and you want people to see your swag, post it Post it on our page. I would love to yeah, see it. Yeah, that's fine but, too. But if yeah. you're shy and don't want to plaster it yeah, everywhere, just, which I get that, I wouldn't. Yeah, just email it to us. We won't share it with anyone. Yeah, we just want to see it. I think that's kind of cool. I think it's very cool, actually. I mean, I'm wearing my swag. Yeah, me too. He's wearing his swag. So get some swag. If you, if you uh, don't mind sharing it with us, that'd be awesome. And last thing, and we probably shouldn't bring this up since we're taking time off, but we're on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> uh, with the exception of the next month, if you like what we do or have learned anything, we would appreciate uh, if you would become a patron. Yep. Every uh, little bit helps because this is uh, it's not a cheap hobby. I mean, I thought RC airplanes was an expensive hobby, but this has uh, turned... Oh, the podcast is not a cheap hobby. Yeah, that is correct. this has turned uh, into quite an adventure. Uh, and <laughs> fortunately for me, Ron has footed most of the bills, so it's uh, uh, it's not. We're not worried about that. That's okay. We don't have to get into but that. It is, but I'm, it is a it is a pretty good uh, financial commitment. So every little bit helps. If, worthwhile, uh, like Ron said, if, if you guys like what we do, uh, and if we've uh, provided something useful to you, and if you don't mind a small. Small contribution, every little bit helps. Large and, uh, contributions are okay or, too. Yeah, but. <laughs> we'll take the large ones too. And uh, just a reminder, we don't uh, we don't buy cool new toys. Uh, if you donate on Patreon, it, it all goes right back into the podcast, usually for recording equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for updates, for all that kind of stuff. It, yeah. You know, yeah. there's building soft, stuff. Yeah, there's software money. licenses that need renewed and uh, other licenses, yearly licenses that need renewed, like on some of the podcasting um are I love called? when I love when you talk about stuff well, like you know called, what you're talking about. Are they and you called have search no engines? Clue. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but there's there's costs <laughs> there's, involved. There's and podcast hosting. There's hosting. website that's hosting. What I was to think there, of. Yeah. There's Thank a you. bunch of stuff, and that's you know. Yeah. That's so. Tell us all about it, Tom. Every little bit helps. That's all I'm gonna say. And I <laughs> and we appreciate uh, all of our patrons thus far too. We so. do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's about it. So let's actually start talking about you know something more fun. Yeah. How about an update? <laughs> on on the battery situation that you mentioned last time. So if you guys remember, it's probably been what three weeks ago or so. Um, yeah. I told you a story about a an acquaintance of uh, mine and Tom's that uh, That's had a, good a battery. Word. Yeah, thank you. That, that had a battery that died on him. Uh, it was a lipo battery, and he mm-hmm. wanted to bring it back. He had drained all the no no no. It didn't drain all the way down. That's right. He tried to uh, charge it on his charger, and it aired out. Mm-hmm. He assumed the battery was dead, uh, so he tried to revive it. I'm not going to get into it again, but... Yep. Um, We're not going to describe the process, <laughs> but he tried to bring a battery back from the dead. And I love this story because it just gets better and better. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not funny, actually. I, I don't want to act like we're we're not condoning anything. Well, and I don't want to browbeat anyone either, though. At times, and brow- I've got the brows for it. I'm just saying. <laughs> at times, browbeating <laughs> is warranted. I will say that. But however, okay, so back to it. Back to the story. So long story short, he tried to charge it. He overcharged one of the cells to where it was dangerously high. Uh, and he called me and we were talking about it. And I told him, get it out of your apartment. 
mm-hmm. now. Surprising, honestly, if, if we could back up for just a second. Sure. It's surprising to me that that battery didn't go off before. Like You're right. Because, I mean, that one cell was extremely uh, overcharged. It like, was about five and a quarter volts. Yeah, when it should be nominally 3.7. Well, four point two is fully charged, right? But like the nominal voltage is three seven. Yeah, so give or fully take. charged four point two, and this thing was over five volts for a lipo. That's crazy, crazy voltage for one cell. That's one cell, by the yeah, way. Yeah, single cell, and it yeah. was a four cell battery, and one of them was shorted out, so he wasn't getting any voltage out of it. Yeah. So we oh, told and, and your advice to him was to get it out of there now. Yeah. Um, and you know, dispose of it properly. Mm-hmm. I actually, t- I mean, I didn't tell him to do anything other than get it out of your house and, you know, safely get rid of it. Yeah. Now, to be fair, um, we really haven't described the process to our listeners to safely um, render a LiPo battery safe. I thought we did. Didn't, I thought we did back in the battery episode, didn't well, we? It's been Maybe. a while. <laughs> well, I, but still. As we know, I have a terrible memory. Well, even though... If you, I mean, you don't rely on us for everything. There's a bunch of other <laughs> right. resources out there. So, you yeah. know, pay attention to other things too, not just yeah. us. So if you don't know something, Google is your friend. Yeah. So anyway, this is so terrible. <laughs> he took this explosively dangerous battery. Okay, this battery that's overcharged. Dangerously overcharged. Dangerously overcharged and threw it in the dumpster. And it's a four cell. Did four you mention cell, that? It's a four, four cell. cell so, like 5,000 milliamp yeah. hour, big if, four cell if battery. If this battery goes off, it's substantial. Problematic for yeah, those that it goes word, off around. You're full of good words. That's in good. the dumpster. Just throws it fully throws it charged in the, in the dumpster. Well, it wasn't till last week that I was talking to him and I asked him how that ended up. And he said, well, I took your advice and I threw it away. <laughs> So, well, that wasn't my advice. I didn't tell you just to throw it away. I told you to dispose of it properly. properly. Which, to dispose of it properly means, you know, let's take some charge out of it. Mm-hmm. And I, well, this isn't the time, as Tom likes to say, to browbeat people, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, he who shall remain nameless, um, I, I told him that, you know, that's very dangerous. I, I would not want to be that garbage man that picks up that dumpster. Could you imagine? Puts it in my hopper. Yeah. Crushes everything. And then has a fire. And then has a fire. Yeah. So don't, please don't do that. Don't, don't ever, don't ever do that. Like, yeah. don't do that. And person who, you know, I talked to on the phone that did it, <laughs> don't do that. Okay. Yeah. So that's my update on his story. I mean, just, yeah. Just, if you have a battery that is suspect, even if, even if, you know, it's not at five volts for one cell. If your battery is, you know, really, really puffy, or if it's been in a crash, safely, please, safely dispose of it. And there are ways to do it safely. You can, you can Google how to dispose of a lithium polymer battery. There's, there's lots of ways to do it. The way I uh, have have done it, or the way I should always do it, is uh, discharge it in a safe environment, usually outside, away from anything flammable, just in case. Um, discharge it down to its nominal voltage, and then um, I cut the connector off and I throw it in a bucket of salt water. We discharge it as much as you can discharge well, it. You don't, I mean, you want to go way past. You want to get yeah. down to zero as much as possible. Yeah. but Because uh, you're never going to be charging that battery again. Right. And then, like I said, cut the connector off, save the connector because you can one, save that. By the way, one, one lead wire at a time. At a time yep. Yep. And make them different lengths. Make them different lengths, yeah, so they don't. Yeah, I mean, once they're once it's discharged and there's no voltage in it, they can touch. Yeah, but it has to be zero. So yeah. don't just short it out with yeah. a, a pair and of scissors or something. Yeah. That would be bad. Yeah, and it should sit in a like the way I do it. You throw it in a bucket of uh, salt water. It should stay in there for you know a couple of days at least to make sure it's completely zero, completely void of any voltage, and then only then I usually do like a month. Is it safe to throw away? So yeah, and you can check it with a voltmeter. Yeah. Make sure it's got zero voltage across those leads. But yeah, he did not do that and just tossed it right in the dumpster sitting at whatever voltage it happened to be when he took it off the charger. 5.2 something for one of them. So yeah. So anyway. One, like really, I, I'm shocked that the battery didn't go off like in his apartment. Well, I I didn't hear any voltage. news stories from around town. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have made the news. Probably. Probably would have made the news. So, but anyway, yeah, dispose of your lipos safely, please. And responsibly. Yeah. So, what's next? We ran 
Oh, I um, forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. We, we, so the engines that we're planning on using for the big tri-motor project here. Medium-sized um, tri-motor. <laughs> medium. 144-inch <laughs> wing, and that's a medium airplane over here to this guy. Uh, but anyway, uh, planning on using YS-120s, uh, four-strokes, uh, which are pretty um, – they're animals. I mean, if I could just say it. <laughs> To me, they're animals. They uh, they swing a 16-6 prop at nearly 10,000 RPM. So, um, Screamers, the the two that we have of the three that we're going to eventually have, uh, we ran the two of them together. Um, and man. Do you want to listen to it? Yeah, I do. All right, hold on. It listen. never gets old. I mean, honestly, is yeah, that not that cool? that is so cool. So, obviously, uh, obviously, there's a little or quite a bit of tuning, you know, left to do. But this was just kind of a, hey, let's throw them on something <laughs> together, fire them up, and see if we can get them to run together. And really, the purpose, other it was than testing, other than hearing them run together, um, th there was a reason we we did that. So our goal initially. Uh, which is still would still be very cool. And if any of our listeners uh, have experience with this, uh, feel free to contact us if you've done this successfully. But we wanted to run all three engines off of one fuel tank. Um, so these are YS engines. They use a diaphragm, and they uh, they have a one-way check valve, and they pull pressure off of the crankcase to pressurize the fuel system. So it's a sealed kind of a fuel system that's pressurized. And then a diaphragm regulates the fuel flow to the carburetor. And this is the old style YS 120s that doesn't have a low speed needle. Right. So right, that's exactly. that's kind of what we're coming yeah. across now yeah, as a problem. So, but anyway, didn't yeah. mean to cut you off. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, we we set up this rig uh, that uh, that you can hear and then also see in the video that uh, Ron uh, cut to. Um, Which we'll we'll go ahead and post the full video too of the yeah, the engines yeah. be running. Be sure to today. check out our YouTube channel. It's like It'll be on there. Five minutes of nothing but those engines running, and I have watched that so many times. <laughs> I like, <have> too. <laughs> I mean, it's music to my ears. Yeah. Like I honestly, I know, sorry, I know, and that's I cut just you off. two of them. Imagine. I was not like I was excited about this. Don't get me wrong. Like, okay. I thought this was going to be cool. Yep. Until I heard two of them running together, that's when it like hit home, and I was like, oh my, this is going to be a beast. It's really, really going to be be something to behold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when we show up at the field with this thing, <laughs> I mean, it's going to draw attention. They're loud because they don't have mufflers. No, uh, These are pipes. older YS-120s, straight pipes. And the one of them, uh, the uh, would be the number two engine uh, in the video, which would be the one on the left if you're looking at the watch in the video. It backfires every time you like back off the throttle. So not backfires, but it makes a kind a of a cackle. popping, and it just sounds so mean. I mean, I cannot wait <laughs> yeah. to get three of these things uh, running together. But Order anyway, it. Come on. I want to hear it. Let's go. <laughs> well, it's not as simple as just ordering them. You know, They don't make them anymore. Well, I yeah. know. My fault, I know. You have to go for the old stuff, but that's okay, because well, that's going to be the cool stuff. Well, it's because it I can't afford the new stuff. <laughs> To be honest. No, that's... Especially three of them. But anyway, uh, so this was a test bed. Um, I failed miserably. I could not get just even just the two of these engines uh, to run from one tank uh, for various reasons that uh, uh, I'll try to simplify. Basically, <clears throat> we could get them running okay above idle, but then as soon as we bring them to idle, because of the lack of a low-speed needle valve, I couldn't get the mixture just right because I had to fiddle with the fuel pressure regulator to get it to run at wide open or above idle. So could not get the two issues resolved satisfactorily. I think I said that right. To the correct <laughs> level of satisfaction. Yeah, there you go. Um <laughs> So uh, we've decided that we're going to go ahead and, and play it safe uh, and proceed with the project uh, running each engine on its own tank, which to me, I like better anyway. Instead of having a single point of failure for the fuel system, we have a yeah. you know, kind of almost like a redundant 
sort of well, it's system. Exactly like a redundant system. If we I if mean, we lose a tank, we only lose one engine in this scenario. Whereas a single tank, we lose the tank, we lose all three engines. Yeah, if you lose a tank, if you lose one hose fitting, if a hose yeah. goes bad to where you know it bursts and, or something like that, then I mean, yeah, we lose everything. Yeah, these these engines are somewhat finicky anyway. So who's to say on a single tank setup we lose one engine that does something weird with the pressures and all that other stuff and needles and then we end up losing both in, or all three engines and this is just a safer setup and I'm more comfortable with it this way. So yeah, yeah. I after like after sleeping on it and thinking about it more, I. I think so. Yeah. Like I, I like the idea of having some redundancy because yeah. this is probably not going to be a high glide ratio airplane. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, don't a think lot, so? it's a lot of wing, man. Well, it's going to be heavy. Yeah, is it though? Well, I, I don't know. I guess it depends how we light. build it. We'll see. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, three engines, three gas tanks. It's not going to be fun to fill up. Yeah. Because by the time you get the last one started, you're going to be halfway empty on the first tank. Oh, that's not true. We work together. Work as a team. We get them fired up together. Okay. And maybe use an electric starter. Oh. That would speed things up a lot. That would. On the startup process. That's but true. anyway. We'll, we'll play um, by ear. But yeah, yeah. So be sure to check out. Uh, Ron's going to post the whole uh, run video. It's uh, it's it's not fancy. Our our uh, test rig is not uh, <laughs> fancy, but it works. Uh, That's what all I really care about. matters is the sound and you know just the image of two of these things running together. And the smoke and the I mean it's it, a lot it, of smoke. It comes alive. Yeah, like so. I am. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Come on. Yeah, I got to find a third Which, one. So, so if anybody funny. out there knows uh, where I can find a YS120, hit me up. <laughs> Tom at a reasonable price, please. At rcplanelab.com. Tom at rcplanelab.com, or you can hit me up on Facebook too. On our Facebook page, RC Plane Lab. Oh, that like message or something that goes to you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. can message me right through the page, or you can just post uh, post whatever you got right there on the page, and I'll see it. So that you threw me off. I don't remember what I was going to say now. Oh, I'm sorry. I probably cut you off again. Well, I, don't I do that a lot. I'm sorry. I do it to you too. <laughs> what the heck was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Okay. So before before we sat down to record this, Tom comes up to me. And he's like. So what do you think as like a oh. test bed, what if we just build like a, a big, big stick and put all three engines on it and, and see how it runs and flies before we do the tri-motor? I mean, we could knock out a, a stick in a weekend. You really think like well, that I mean, size? It's going to have to be a big one if you're going to put all well, those yeah, engines on it. Yeah, it would have to be a, a large one. But I mean, structurally speaking, that's a fairly simple airplane and we could probably simplify it, you know, even, Even though more. it's going to be huge and have, you know, we'll have to figure out how to mount, you know, two additional engines, you know, one on each uh, wing panel. But I think, uh, you know, with a little bit of um, ingenuity, ingenuity, yeah, I think we could probably make that happen. Really? I just, I guess we'll see. Maybe we'll end up building a, a big one of those too. I don't. I'm not committed to the idea, but I think I like the idea. Cheap insurance, I guess. Yeah. That way, if something doesn't work right, you can. Exactly. Print. I could be talked into that, <laughs> but it would have to be soon. Yeah. Because I don't want to keep pushing this off. No, I agree. Like, yeah. this is, it's time. Let's yeah. do this. Come yeah. on. It's time to start making shavings. Good. Yeah. Anything okay. else on the tri-motor? No, that's, uh, that's all I want to talk about on that. All right. Last topic. The actual topic that we'll talk about. Channels or Chanel's. Oh my God. Channels. Or, or Shanley's. I don't know. That's if you misspell it. I've misspelled it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> when we typed up our notes, I had a few different versions. But yeah, channels. So they... first off, I want to say, you can see, like, if you're watching on YouTube, how many transmitters we have sitting out. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely amazing how many transmitters, over the years of being in the hobby, you acquire that really should just be gotten rid of. Yeah. And this Okay, is well, a... that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and... So what Ron is referring to, he's making fun of me because I'm on, one, old. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. He's making fun of me because I'm There's old, 11 sitting out here. And I've been the in the others. hobby a long time and I tend to hang on to things. He's, he actually, he calls me a hoarder, which I'm not quite sure I will go along with that. But at any rate, I have a hard time letting go of things. Anyone that has seen your workshop. It's bad. I, I, we'll call it an organized hoarding. <laughs> it is organized. But I'm not saying that in a bad um, way. Once again- I don't consider hoarding yeah. bad. So 
And this isn't even all of them. Like, I, I know. I mean, I have thrown some away over the years that are have just, you know, there's just well, absolutely worth nothing. You've but, given me one that's not sitting out here too. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I've, you know, been in the hobby a while, so I've got a lot of transmitters. Anyway, okay, channels. Channels. How many do you need? Four. The end. Let's move on. <laughs> No. So, okay. like, really, how many do you really, really need? How many and, do you really need? I would say four. And the answer, well, yeah, I agree. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, you can get away with three. No. Maybe two. No. But you really need for for a for, a, and Ten. I'm gonna and I'm gonna potentially upset a few listeners and viewers out there, but um, a balsa airplane that we like. That's what our show is about: balsa airplanes, mostly. Um, the best flying airplanes they, out there. We feel together. We feel that balsa flies better, and um, a balsa airplane, in our opinion, again, our opinion, uh, needs four channels. Well, even a foamy needs four channels. I mean, let's be honest. If you buy the you know like e flights and the EPP foam or EPO foam, whatever that I don't remember what it is right offhand. Yeah, four channels mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. What do you need? Throttle. Well, you need throttle, some way to control the speed of the airplane. Elevator. Which controls the pitch or up and down. Rudder. Yep. That controls the yaw or the left to right motion of the nose to the tail. So those are the three that you can get away with if you want to cheat. <laughs> okay. I'll go along with that. <laughs> but if you want to do it correctly and not teach yourself bad habits, you need ailerons. Ailerons, which controls roll or bank. Yep. So the reason I say that, and we've said this several times before, especially like in the uh, trainer uh, episode. Mm -hmm. If you learn on a three-channel radio, this is what I did. I learned on three-channel, and I taught myself a lot of bad habits yeah. because the rudder switches from left finger to, right. to finger. Mm -hmm. When you go to a four-channel, the rudder ends up being on your left thumb. Yeah. When you're on a three-channel, it's on your right thumb. Yeah. At least that's how I learned. Yeah, and in, in here in uh, the United States, oh, uh, yeah. mo mode Sorry. two is the more common Forgot about that. Um, setup. So, no, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. It, the learn, kind of relearning... Yaw control from one hand to the next trips, you know, can trip you a lot, can trip a lot of people up actually. Flying, it's not too different, but taxiing on the ground, takeoffs and landings. Well, if you're flying correctly, well, I guess I don't fly correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you're coordinating your turns, if you're doing all that stuff, sure. <laughs> uh, which I don't necessarily do that. I like to so make fun of Ron because he doesn't uh, feed in rudder with his turns. Again, a coordinated turn, a coordinated turn or a proper turn usually will incorporate at least a little bit of rudder with your ailerons. Is, are you done? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that it? That's all I'm going to say about it. Oh, okay. I've, I've beat you enough. You don't need rudder. <laughs> on, I mean, honestly, like on a, no. lot of the, on a lot of the trainer type planes, on a lot of the small planes, you don't need them. True. Big planes, probably like the, the tri-motor, like the yak, like all that stuff. It does make a difference. It does. So, yeah, that's all I'll say on that. Hmm. <laughs> Four channels. Four channels are what you really need. But what else would you use? Oh, gosh. I mean, you could certainly use more than four channels. For oh, things, could you? For Tell things, me what you could use them with. <laughs> for things like, uh, I don't know, let's say you want to put flaps on your airplane. That's another channel. That's number five. So that could be five channels. Um, what if you wanted to put uh, retractable landing gear? There's, well, there's another, another channel. channel. Now we're up to six. Um, let's say you want to put, uh, some lighting on your airplane, maybe that is uh, remotely controlled. There's channel number seven. Mm -hmm. Uh, what if, uh, like on our telemaster, we want to put a, a, a mechanism for opening a hatch and dropping candy or things like that? Well, there's another channel. So basically a channel is a, uh, is a, it refers to one channel would be one pathway of communication between your transmitter and your receiver. That is so well worded. So that's a channel. That yeah. is beautiful. In case anybody was wondering, that that's essentially what a channel is. And for each channel you have, you have one lane of or line of communication between your transmitter and your receiver. One lane of traffic. Yep, exactly. But you can, uh, sometimes you can cheat, like um, Y harnesses. So let's say um, you want two servos, you want to put one servo on each aileron. Um, Which this is very common, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you don't mind not having flaps or flaprons. You just want to operate your ailerons uh, with two separate servos. 
uh, because maybe it makes the linkage uh, simpler. Uh, maybe you don't want to use torque rods, which is a, uh, a method of connecting one servo to two ailerons. Is that kind um, of old school, though? It's kind of old school. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, most most airplanes are set up with uh, separate servos. Um, but you can, like if you have a uh, four-channel radio and you don't have a extra channel to use to plug that other aileron servo into another channel, you can use a wire harness and plug both those servos within reason uh, into one channel. <laughs> There's and I say, always caveats. And I say within reason, there is a limit to the current uh, that those small little servo wires can handle. So... Uh, one uh, one lane of communication from your receiver is usually enough for one servo, but when you start ganging up servos on it, uh, you could potentially run into issues. Uh, more often than not, a standard sized, standard kind of analog, even a standard digital servo, you're not going to run into that. No. Anyway, that's how you can sort of operate two servos with one channel by using a wire harness. But what do you lose by doing that? So let's see. You lose being able to adjust them separately. So yep. your linkages become very important, and they have mm -hmm. to be dead on. Mm -hmm. um, you still have trim. You know, you have a little bit of trim on it where you can you can get it to to adjust one way or another a little bit, but you're not going to have the individual adjustments that you would have if you ran it mm -hmm. separately. Yep. And new radios, I mean, they channels have become. Yeah. I mean, they're they're huge. I mean, it's like I asked you before we started. <laughs> Uh, started the show. Can we? Can you even buy a four-channel radio anymore? Yeah, I think like the 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 smallest number I've seen common way at least is like six. Yeah, not nowadays. I think it. I think for what it costs to buy a four-channel, a six-channel radio is probably. I mean, it can't be that much more. But I mean, you I know, the radio for four channels. Well, yeah, honestly, the radio so. we just gave away. You know, six channels for under fifty bucks. Yeah. So I mean. I'm not even sure they make four-channel radios anymore. But <laughs> they anyway. might for toys, but not um, for the real stuff we're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. yeah get, channels is, is how many do you want, how many do you need, but four is basic, yeah. like I said, and six is probably the cheapest and, and less or the least you're going to find. Yeah, and by no means, <clears throat> by no means, if you only have four channels to work with, um, should that be a limiting factor? I mean, you can still have a lot of fun with just four channels. See, when I started, like, I think I kind of, that's what I'm looking for, was turned off by the four-channel receiver or the four-channel transmitter because the one that came with my Super Cub was not, I guess not what you call hobby grade. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. Like, the, it didn't have a lot of power, and mm, I lost okay. signal multiple times with that. By going up, like with Spectrum to the DX5, mm -hmm. and then the 6, and then the 8, mm -hmm. you got a lot more coverage. Power, yeah. Yeah, a lot more, more power, power output. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, like the, the four-channel ones have always kind of seemed like more toyish. Yeah. No, whether I, or not that's right or not. I, I, I know what you're saying, and I, I feel that way too. Um, yeah. A long time ago, uh, when How I... How long ago, Tom? It's been a while. Uh, when I started, you know, four channels radios were uh, kind of the norm. And if you wanted extra channels, you really, really had to pay extra for those five and six channel radios. And back then, if you had an eight channel radio, man, you were... You were rolling in the dough. You were, yeah, you were someone when you show up to a field and you had a radio with two switches on it. <laughs> I mean, you were really somebody. And now I show up with a DX8 and get made fun of. <laughs> That's all That's you have? That's true. Yeah, you made fun of me. Um, no, I didn't. You have too. I, okay, I said an old radio. That's all I said. Still hurt my feelings. Well, I have one too. See, yeah, but right you here. don't use anymore. Yes, I do. I flew with it yesterday. Well, I wasn't there. You didn't invite mm -hmm. me. Well, you had stuff going on. It's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, you can still have a lot of fun if you only have a four-channel radio. And even, even a six-channel radio, boy, you can have a lot of fun with a six-channel radio. Uh, flaps, retracts, separate servos for ailerons with flapperons. I mean, you know. Lots of things you can do with them. But basically, four channels is all you really, really need. Yeah. But like I, I said, agree. I'm not sure you can even get a four-channel radio anymore. Anything and if else? you can, I'm sure there's a listener out there that will correct me. <laughs> and I hope you do because keep me honest. Yeah, and they yeah. do it often, which By is By no awesome. means am I like uh, all-knowing. Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? What no, else? so that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, we talked a little bit in the um, – first airplane episode sort of how to how to set up a radio and uh, i think we may have covered uh transmitters kind of 
radio setup. Yeah, there's one some other way back when. Um, so if you want to know how to set up a transmitter, you can go back and uh, listen to those uh, those episodes. Um, you can find them usually with a cool search function uh, on whatever podcasting app you use. Um, but uh, maybe maybe in the future I'll do a quick uh, quick how to set up an airplane or something like that to show you kind of how to set up maybe something with flapperons or how you would use all those four channels. All those four channels. <laughs> Each and every one of them. Plus, all right. Anything else? No, that's all. I, that's all I have. I hope uh, hope everybody's uh, at home and healthy, and be sure to go to YouTube and check out our videos. That YS Run video is really, really interesting. Man, are we really about to get a month off? I think we're we gonna so. sign off for the last time for a month. Well, I mean, yeah, for we're this? not. We're not. Yeah, gonna yeah. post anything, but we'll be busy. Cool. <laughs> well, well, before we go, I wanted to say I forgot. Um, I was busy yesterday, Sunday, because my mom turned 75, and I want to say happy birthday, Mom. Aw, happy birthday, Marilyn. Uh, okay. So until next time, until next month, everybody, thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Yep. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. Enjoy our break as much as we do. Yeah. Hope you guys have uh, have a good summer. Do lots of flying. Um, show us your pictures of your swag if you buy it. Um, we like seeing that kind of stuff. We also like uh, pictures of airplanes. Yeah, send us so, stuff. Yeah, send us stuff. All Don't right. be a stranger. Until next time, I'm Ron. I'm Tom. Have a wonderful month. We'll see you later. <laughs> see ya. Bye. And we're done. Have a wonderful month? I don't know. What should I say? <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs>